Hello, friends. Drugs. Drugs. We're talking about drugs, drugs today. Drugs. You know, drugs and heathens have a long history together. <laughs> <laughs> um, To get right into it, Nicole and I want to start this podcast by naming off a few intentions and things that we have in mind for this podcast that we really want to get out. Um, one, we work with people and we've seen a lot of addicts and especially recovering addicts over the, our lifetime. And um, I have some very close contact with addicts and I we are not condoning the use of weed, alcohol, or psychedelics. And we're not not condoning. We are saying think for yourself, do what feels right to you within reason, of course. But we are not here to say that drugs are the best thing in the world and everybody should be on them and using them. No, we're also and not this, saying that. <laughs> I, we are not your mothers. We are not right. the authority over yes. you. Right. We are... Uh, we're bringing this topic up so we can look at it in more of a, what's the word I want? Analytical way. Yeah. Or an open of it, way. An open way. We're going to discuss the polarities of both of them, of all of them. Well, we have three of them that we're specifically talking about. Yes. Um, which are? Which are? The Mary Jane. Alcohol. And, and the mushies. And the mushies, the psilocybins. 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 Psilocybins, but psilocybins. But on all, like, seriously, think for yourself and don't, don't blame it on other people. Like, deal with your shit, right? Like, it's hard. I get it. Yeah. And we're going to talk about, like, a lot of different things it. today, right. you guys. Like, our experiences, things that we're curious about, things that we don't recommend doing, you know, things like that, where it's just like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. So let's start with the most well accepted. Let's talk with, uh, about alcohol. Talk about alcohol first. Mm -hmm. Um. So the one thing that I did come up with that I want to tell everybody about is to when you want to protect yourself from drinking and you're sensitive and you want to have intentions and this will help you with drinking socially. Well, what, however you want to do. I'm not your mom. Um, protect your crown chakra and your aura before you go out. Two, before you drink, make sure you ground and bless to clear out any unwanted energy, any negative or any, because when people make stuff, obviously... They put energy in it. The spirit themselves has energy of themselves. So if you ground and bless the drink before you drink it and then set an intention and stir three times to the left. Why? Um, left takes out things. Uh, so you're like banishing any and everything out of your drink before you even drink it. Right. So the first thing that I got was about the demon. Uh the spirit. It's called a demon. Uh call It's like alcohol, but it's alcohol. A L dash K U H L. They hmm. say it's a demon. And I thought it was interesting because I do think this is head on is body eating spirit. Hmm. And if you think about it, um, if you overindulge in alcohol for a very, very, very long time, it does eat your body, right? Mm -hmm. In a sense, in a sense, in a sense. Yeah. Um, I feel that alcohol can be used as a tool i believe that when you are going through hard times and feelings are very sharp that one or two glasses shots of alcohol can help you move through these aspects of yourself without overtaking you and without it being so blunt and in your face it also brings down this veil of consciousness 
that makes you flow a little freer and um anytime i've had really good conversations it's in this medium realm of alcohol or detoxification you're welcome <laughs> detoxinate wait how do you say it intoxication thank you <laughs> uh that n said no i will be in this <laughs> yeah i put ends in it um there's a sweet little spot where you can really like have this beautiful flow of communication that um, connects you with another human being in a way that like, yeah, you can get there through not having alcohol. I'm not using it as a crutch, but like it's this merry moment of connection us with two, three, a group of human beings We've all sat around a campfire, well, most of us have sat around a campfire and really have had this experience where we are sitting around with our friends, with our family and having this um, moment, this like, we're right here, we're right now, like we're not thinking about the past, where maybe we're even like going through something that bothered us and somebody's, we're asking for like guidance or help or just somebody to listen, like they're beautiful moments on alcohol. Now, we all know the other flip side of that, don't we? <laughs> I've been there puking my guts out and uh, in the bushes or crying on the sidewalk outside of a bar. Uh, yeah, done that too. And even that has its own beautiful feeling into it. Now, you know, I can't stay there and I can't do that every night. That's not how you do that. But like, you know, sometimes it lowers those inhibitions that you can finally be, at least for me, because I hold myself in such a rule. Like I have rules for being human, right? Like don't say this, don't say this, don't say that. You know, you got to be polite. You got to be kind, like all these rules. There's never a moment when I am unhinged usually 99% of the time I, I have boundaries. A few moments when I have partaked in alcohol too much or over the top is when it was unbridled. And uh, looking back at it now, I know it was, it was almost like it needed to happen. It needed to like, come out because of course afterwards you feel bad and guilty and you know like all of a sudden you're on the other path of that pendulum and now you're sober you're exercising you're eating healthy <laughs> just to just to fuel that guilt or like to get that guilt not to be so heavy on your mind and stuff like that um blackouts when you've drinking too much is a very is a good way of uh, ejecting your spirit out of your body because your body becomes so intoxicated that your spirit can't, uh, it can't stay inside. So it almost drops out of the vessel. It's almost like your body has gotten too low vibrationally that your spirit has to like, it can't follow you. This sometimes can have the effect of influence uh, attachments and um, spirits like invoke um, possessing you and that's why when people black out a lot of times you're like oh my god dude like you were crazy or you were acting yourself or that kind of thing um I also believe this sometimes brings forth our shadow too heavily like if um you're sad and you're suppressing that it comes out you start crying we all know those, we all know those people. They have to cry. There's like a moment, a sweet pot, a joy, and then too much drinking. And then you start crying. We know this. Or angry. We've seen that too. Um, I saw that it took the veil down between your conscious and your subconscious. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I didn't have any other thoughts on that. 
Um, they say when you do when you do blackout, it takes three to five days for your soul to fully come back or your spirit to fully come back into you. And I feel the more you work on yourself, the more sensitive you get. You almost feel that. Like you don't feel quite right the next day. Obviously, that's a hangover. You know, you feel like shit. But then like it's not just a hangover. It's like uh you feel it like leaving your the toxins almost leaving your body. Yeah, I can't speak too much to a blackout. I've never had one, so I don't really know what that feels like. Or like um anything really about it in that respect but that makes sense mm -hmm. i don't even know if you would know if somebody else like blacked out like if you were looking at them and maybe you would like if but there's still that person so it's it's hard to like and you and i haven't been around a lot of people that have blacked out you know, yeah like you know honestly i don't think i've i've heard of obviously people have talked to us about blacking out but i don't mm -hmm. think i've ever really seen somebody black out because like the one person that I have been around that has gone a little overboard with drinking I've never seen them actually black out because like while their you know over use of this has been more uh, aggressive or like the emotion release I haven't ever seen them black out so yeah I can't I've only ever heard of it. You know what I mean? Somebody's right. like, yeah, I blacked out. And I'm like, I have never witnessed that. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's that moment where you miss time, you know, and you don't know how you ended up here. I will say, though, um, knowing somebody that overuses alcohol or and uses it every day, that had they recently had said to me that because they hadn't been drinking for a couple of days, which mm -hmm. was kind of like a shocking thing. And um, they had said to me that time's going so slow. And I was like, yeah, it's making it so you're not on this like fast pace, like time you look at the clock, it's already been two hours kind of thing. And I was like, you're always talking about how, you know, there's never enough time in the day for you to just relax, mm -hmm. but you're also not usually sober to be able to enjoy that time right you're never in the moment really and it dulls down mm -hmm. your senses and your feelings like that's that's really why my theory on alcoholism is this is that there's a feeling that somebody is covering up that they don't want to feel you know and um and i'm not a doctor or anything like that this is just like me interpreting what they give me and a lot of things that I've seen, people that habitually drink, it's a feeling that they don't want to deal with. It's too hard for them to like. Most likely they're sensitive and they feel a lot and either they don't want to or it's too big of a, it's too afraid or too scary to face that feeling, whatever it is. And it could be anything. They made a mistake when they were 17. They like... It could be abuse when they got abused when they were kids. Like, you know, it could be anything that they have deemed monstrous and they're trying to keep that at bay. And that's really what alcohol is doing is keeping that at bay so they don't have to feel it. Um, I do, let's see here. You, can, I do believe that you can use um drinking in spirituality i don't think those two i don't think those two can't exist without like uh or they don't exist with uh you know what, what am i trying to say like you can't you can have spiritually and you can use alcohol in the same breath like it's not like one's more holy than the other right um, but they do, they use alcohol to attract, extract the essence of all living things. That's what it was made for. So when you're putting um, lavender in alcohol, it extracts that essence of the lavender. And that's how we get tinctures and stuff. Hmm. Um, but if you think about that thought about extracting the essence 
And if you've seen somebody who has drank heavily uh, for, you can see the change in their spirit and their demeanor and their body. And it is almost like it's extracting that, that life force, that essence of them. Um, and then the only other thing is with any drug, I do believe that it is a tool to be used and you need to learn how to use that tool with you and your body, um, like an experiment and find out where your boundaries are with each one. You are the master of this tool. The tool is not the master of you. So, and I know that's, that's definitely a very easy way of saying something, especially when you're dealing with addiction. Um, but if you really embody that kind of, um, euphemism, I think you could really use it to help you along the way of being a master over your own addictions. Yeah. Um, so did you find anything else out about alcohol? Well, it's not that I necessarily found stuff out. It's just that I had more to add to what you were saying. Like, mm -hmm. I do think alcohol is obviously a hard conversation to have, especially if you know somebody who is recovering or is still addicted. Because, you know, especially in the metaphysical com like community, this is a hard one to talk about because there is Absolutely. this huge drive on alcohol inhibiting your awareness and your judgment and your connection to others and like it lowering your vibration and numbing your psychic senses. But for me, I have to say, I think my personal, just in my journey, not what I've witnessed around me, because I can't, I can't say that this is the same for others, but in my own personal experience, I have a very different relationship with alcohol than this whole lower vibration thing, this thing that makes you aggressive or angry. For me, I feel like it really if you think about it down in like the alchemy of it, it's water, it's fire, it's earth, it's air. It's, it's all spicy. of those because most of the time you need the heat to heat it up for fermentation. You need the water in there. It comes from plants that are in the ground most of the time. And then on top of it, you need that aeration. And I think about alcohol in that way. And personally, I feel like for me, what it does and when I do use it, for this, it helps to bring down this, like my self image and this wall that I have up that I have to be perfect at all times. It allows it to fall. And then mm -hmm. for me, it allows freedom to move, create whatever I'm creating. Like if I feel like dancing, I can dance, get my body mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like in ritual or ceremony, it allows that spotlight feeling to come off of me to where I can truly participate and I'm not saying it in a way of like, it's a crutch. I'm saying that if it is, if you think that I'm, that's me using it as a crutch, then by all means think that because maybe I am using it in that way. Mm -hmm. It has really helped me in a lot of ways like that, where it's like, I don't feel like I'm uh, performing on a stage. I can actually truly just allow mm -hmm. everything to flow. Mm -hmm. um, now, is that, do I think that all the time or use it for that all the time? Absolutely not. I mean, alcohol can be fun. It can make it easier to be around crowds of people, especially for those of us that have a very hard time with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is this thing that happens once you start being aware of the way that you feel on it and you start actually respecting it of like, you, you can uh, appreciate for what it brews into you because there has been times where, I am a very emotional person and I am somebody that hides it. I like to hide it and keep it close to my chest. And I will say alcohol allows that to flow sometimes. And mm -hmm. I, it's, it's been one of those things where it's like, it'll spark a conversation. And is it a great conversation to have in the moment? No, but I have learned to be like, listen, this is coming up right now. And I'd like to talk about it maybe tomorrow. And it allows that openness to come up where it's like this feeling is at the forefront now. It's something you need to deal with because you've been pushing it to the back and then bringing it forward for you. Right. So like I do have this respect for alcohol that has allowed 
me to also not overindulge in it. I can't, there's been very few and far in between moments where I've truly felt drunk in years. Mm -hmm. But I will say something that has helped me to, to, um, create the respect for it would be fasting, like doing an alcohol fast, where even if it's many periods of time or long periods of time, like doing like a 30 day fast from alcohol, regardless of if somebody's like, just have it with me, I'm on an alcohol fast. And Mm -hmm. if they can't respect that, that's not, you know, it's boundary. It's a good thing. They should Mm -hmm. be able to. And Absolutely. especially if they care about you. Right. So it's mm-hmm. like, I feel like when I don't drink in those long periods of time, it also helps to encourage me on my own self-regulation to like be able to really deal with a lot of other things that I need to be dealing with, which is cool. And then I've like started to create this like a uh, boundary for myself with alcohol that is we're I choose when it's going to happen. I'm aware of it. And it's like, I'm spiritually prepping for that night. Like um, if I do have an event where it's like, okay, I'll probably drink a little bit. Then I like kind of prepare for it. So like the whole intentions thing you had said, it's like, Mm -hmm. I'm putting the intention behind like this night, this is why I will be drinking or this night. I maybe I'll just be socially drinking to have fun. To right. just enjoy myself and not let the weight of the world be on me. But I also don't, and, and take this with a grain of salt. Again, this is like my personal experience because I have seen it um, really bring out rage in others, mm-hmm. moodiness and anger, which I do feel is, in it, like you said, an emotion that we're using this as like something to hide it. But then it's like, alcohol is like, no it's coming out Mm -hmm. and you're not going to know why you're feeling it, but you're feeling it. And that's, I feel like where it's hard to, because if you're not somebody who's a, a bit, who's able to be aware during that, you won't even know to look for it. You'll blame it on alcohol. Well, I guess I would like to redefine that just a little bit is that I feel if you're drinking alone in your house till you're drunk, that's, that's suppression. Right. hundred percent. Yes. But if you're out in a group, and you're fully projecting onto other people. And we've all seen it where they've oh, yeah. like been triggered. And then all of a sudden there's a huge fight and these guys wouldn't even have fought. Like I've seen, I've even tried to hold people back and talk them on off their ledge. Like you're yeah. about ready to hit a girl. Are you ready for that? Like, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely see both sides of that right like yeah it's like it's a double-edged sword don't get me wrong like mm -hmm. (laughs) i do think that alcohol can be a part of a healthy lifestyle and a healthy spirituality if it's consumed thoughtfully and moderately is what i'd like to say right and it all depends on like the the level of your journey at this point like you know we talk to people that are higher up into the spiritual community And a lot of times they don't need it anymore because they've reached this level of themselves where they don't need it. Where like, I uh, feel like I partake in it at this point or use it to advance my spiritual. So like if I'm meditating and I smoke uh, marijuana, then it opens up this whole other universe for me quicker and it gets me to a place where I can understand what I'm trying to download and integrate into my system um instead of like like I'm just not there yet I don't yeah. feel like I am you know me like neither I'm, and I this is really a good so it is a crutch but that's okay I'm yeah. using it for a crutch and but to the ultimate goal is to keep moving forward. I'm not sitting here in this state for the next 20 years. No, I'm trying to get to that. I hate to even use this word, but this place of enlightenment of, you know, it's always this Jacob ladder. Like I'm always trying to go up the next step, like to uh, my next level of spirituality. 
Yeah. I mean, there is that, that old, they call it liquid courage kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I will use that for the benefit of myself and others, especially during ceremony. I just, you guys really feel sometimes like I'm, I'm like a little introverted and that's when my introverted part of me comes out where it's like, I have to hold a corner. Mm. I don't want to be in front of everybody and say things and Mm. and, and the spotlight the stage like oh um towers of the universe like yeah west water uh, yeah I'm like I need my phone for the script I gotta have a script and it's like for me using that crutch allows it to flow where I don't have Mm -hmm. to think about it I don't feel like I'm on that stage I feel like I'm a part of the group and I'm just I'm able to like let that wall down of like I don't want to, I don't want to. Yeah. That inhibition, like that whole, like, oh God, don't do this. Like, no, no, quiet down. I need to do this. I have to do this and I can Mm -hmm. do this. And Mm -hmm. it just gives me that little bit of fire in my chest to be able to be like, okay, I'm warmed up. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Right. And it's so funny because when you talk to people about this, like using alcohol as like a tool, like when I was uh, playing kickball, I would always do a couple shots before I play kickball because I was so anxiety ridden about all of it. So let's like (laughs) peace in my head like this. The alcohol stops me from thinking I'm too fat, too old, too uh, not athletic enough. Um all these like detrimental thoughts that would keep me from doing this particular sport with a group of people. Um, it helped shush that and let me perform the way I needed to perform. Yeah. It's almost like there's like the sweet spot where it like really pulls you and grounds you into your body. Cause you're so stuck in it. And then there's this really slippery slope where it's going to shove you out of your body too and make you like that unconscious being. Right. Because you got to be strong enough to handle alcohol. That's why, you know, a lot of times we don't give alcohol to kids because now granted, I know it's a law and shit like that, but like (laughs) we don't give, we don't give alcohol to kids because they don't have that kind of will yet. They're very subjectical already, subjectical already. And (laughs) it's, we don't need to help them be influenced in that way at that point where an alcohol was it's alchemy first of all and it was used for medicine so if you think about it more as a medicine like i'm taking a medicine which medicine is dosed so if you dose it like we microdose the psilocybin Mm -hmm. this is where if you microdose alcohol not that i'm saying you should but this is the kind of stuff that you would, it would help you out in the long run instead of being like, oh, I'm overindulging. But it's very hard to dose these things because it's so acceptable in every, in all the cultures, in all, uh, all humanity, right? Like, and like there's, there's something coming through. I'm going to try to I'm going to try here. So maybe if it doesn't make sense, Nicole can help, but there's a lot of trauma right behind even hearing this conversation, thinking about this. And I'm sure before anybody comes to it for us, that's me, not this. uh, If there's a trigger there and hearing somebody talk about alcohol in the way that we are with respect and with this like you using the words microdosing and um the conversation about alcohol if you are getting triggered there's trauma there and you need to heal it Absolutely. okay mm-hmm. and there could be trauma that's coming from third party that you have witnessed that you have been you Endured. know yeah and like i I'm going to use this word in a good way but victimized to you because y- you have endured this you have had this pain This is something you need to heal because alcohol is a tool. And yes, there is a spirit behind it. There's, there's energy behind every single thing in this planet that we can feel, touch, see, but it can be worked with. It's like a demon. 
not all demons are bad. Some people work with demons and they use them because demons have rules to follow. It's kind of like alcohol. Alcohol has a rule to follow, but if you are not strong enough with those boundaries in place and with strong self-regulation, you can fall to that slippery slope and you could potentially not want anything to do with it. And that is totally okay. But there could still be trauma from somebody else who wants everything to do with it. So the tra- I think what that was chills everywhere that what that was is the trauma behind it needs to be healed mm. as well because I think we all have alcohol trauma and I oh yeah regardless of if it's personal or been inflicted mm-hmm. very much so I mean alcohol is no different than like money or any sort of like thing that we can owe food like anything that you're trying to run away or suppress a part of yourself that needs to be heard is going to rear up and bite you in the ass. And, you know, that's the thing is that it's not the thing that's bad. It's how we use it and how we look at it at the, you know, at the soul level. Cause even if you look at the shaman mystics, like, and the mystics, like they, feel everything has an essence has a soul or a spirit so alcohol Mm -hmm. is no different and it is also named spirit like Mm -hmm. yeah um you've got to take the power away from the item that you're fearing and give it back to yourself yes 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 um in that uh, do you have anything to add and no alcohol is good for me okay so uh and by all means with alcohol, if you need help, go get it. Don't like yes. talk to even like, I believe that you should continue. Well, in one way, I guess, aspect, I always see like, start talking to a therapist and talk about the feelings of why you're drinking instead of like automatically thinking that you're a bad person because you're drinking, right? Because that's just going to add to drinking more. Also, one more thing. I'm sorry. This just came in too, because I was thinking about this because I talk about this often. There is no shame mm-hmm. in going to AA because you have what I what I want to give is that everybody in AA has also felt that shame. Absolutely. And those people are going to be able to really understand where you're at and what you're going through mm-hmm. because they also are either actively going through it or have actively went through it. And there's no shame in saying you need that help or you need a support group. And no. I've no, I know a lot of people that have gone through AA or actively in it. And the amount of support and love and care and understanding that they feel is it's, it's really beautiful. Absolutely. You need, we need a village to help us through this and you need other people that understand where you're coming from to get through this. Also, like you're going to fail and that's okay. That yeah. you're you're integrating a new part of your life. So there's going to be these moments of like um weakness where you it's almost like you're breaking up and it's hard to sever that tide, you know, right off the bat, which you know, yes, that happens too. There's also this way of integrating, like letting something go. Yeah. And there's going to be these moments where you might relapse and that's okay. The thing is, is that you want to stay on the bike. It's not like you fall over and then you never ride the bike again. Cause you're like, that's a stupid bike and right. it didn't work, but that's how we use alcohol. Like, oh, that's not, I, it can't, AA doesn't work for me. Okay. You didn't get back on the bike and do it right. again. Right. So right. just. I mean, just like with, with me trying to integrate this magical routine every morning, have I been doing it every day for the past two years? I would like to say yes, but no, I like, (laughs) but what I've noticed is, is I started out with like doing it every day and then I would be off for almost three, four weeks and then I would get back on it and be on it for so long. And then I would have to have, almost have to have this moment of rest. But instead of me being open and honest about this open of rest, I would be like, 
oh, I'm a failure. I am lazy. I am, you know, all the stuff that is, you know, trying to make me not follow magic and not follow what I'm supposed to be doing and making sure I don't get back on it when my will and my path is to do magic. So learning that these rests that we have are supposed to be, you just can't stay there. Yes. I Beautifully said. Okay. Next, we are going to the marijuana. The, the devil's, devil's lettuce. lettuce. <laughs> the Mary Jane. The holy Mary Jane. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, weed marijuana is a feminine energy that's so um, funny because that's not what i what i read really i read that it was traditionally related to saturn and capricorn and making it symbolic of the earth which i guess earth energy right is feminine but saturn is masculine saturn well uh it's interesting because i think in the Kabbalah, it's a feminine energy. But like in the planets, I don't know. We'd have to look into that a little deeper. Yeah, because like... in alchemy, it's considered masculine. Yeah. So it's uh, because, you know, the tree of life, the uh, Kabbalistic tree of life, it's on the feminine side, the receiving side, which I never understood. Like, I still don't understand it. But, you know, I'm on... <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we're you're we're on a journey. You're on a journey. Uh, you know, I wonder. I have the Natural Magic by John Michael Greer. Do you want me to go get it real quick to look? I don't know if it's in there though. Or we that would be wait. interesting because there's a book that I that a lot of the information I got is from, but this book is two hundred and thirty five dollars because they are no longer making it, and it is like a coveted it book it is called green gold the tree of life marijuana and magic and religion by chris bennett and this book wow. goes into a ton of history on cannabis then in the formation of religious beliefs thoughts and spirituality in all kinds of different religion did you say green gold it's green gold the tree of life marijuana and magic and religion by chris bennett and to others um as well but it goes into religion working of many different faiths and how cannabis also was used in like the formation of those and how old this dates back and how alchemists were the first ones to be using cannabis and i was like oh what <laughs> that is so um, I'm gonna have to look for it. I was gonna see if I can get it off of like um Amazon has it and it is eighty dollars. Hey, will you send that to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause there was this um I couldn't really find a synopsis of this right book because this book had a lot of information that I pulled to talk to you guys about because I thought you would also find this very interesting. Mm -hmm. But there's this one review that I found that was really cool because there, there there's two and it was like saying how it was an incredible amount of information to process, much of which I've never heard before reading the book. I was surprised to find out that cannabis had once played a key spiritual role in the development of some of our most popular forms of religion, including Christianity, Judaism, and Hinduism. I was also surprised to learn about its use in alchemy and how it may have changed the way people viewed what we know as science during ancient times. Wow. Because the oldest recorded documentation of cannabis it, from this book, they said that it predates back to ancient China. Oh, wow. And I was like, like the period That's... of time in the Inquisition and the Roman Catholic Church's role in per persecuting hemp during Christian beliefs. It, it's just, I want that book to say the least. <laughs> We're going to get it. We're going to get that book. We're getting that book. But that's um, where that like whole Saturn Capricorn thing came from too, was that book. So that's why I was interested 
to hear what you have about that. Well, that's being the thing. feminine energy. I found that now, I guess I didn't fact check it, but I found that off of like Instagram, you know, how they go through and they'll have like a married, uh, like the magical properties of blah, blah, blah. Right? Yes. And it's like energy and yeah. planet and all that. Yeah. I also give the spirits marijuana too. Like I'll burn it for them, like an incense almost. Yes. Um, I, one of my first uh magical gifts that had popped out of the ether by itself through a friend i got this through Derek. um so i got this bottle from Derek. somebody came into his shop and gave him this bottle and this is the med- a medical cannabis holy anointed oil so this is the recipe from exodus 30 22 through 25 um this is the oil the recipe for the oil that they uh anointed jesus with my exploding what and um i've actually i'm getting really close to make my own um i'm not there yet I think I have most of the ingredients. I have to, I'm waiting for something. I don't know yet. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, he, he literally, Derek's like, oh, I got a, I got some oil from you. And I was like, oh, okay. And he brought me the oil and it's, I was like, what? and this was years ago. Like, and I actually use it in that first, um, house cleansing with that uh guy that had bought a demon off of ebay <laughs> which if we haven't given you disclaimers don't just buy. go listen to diy house cleansings and all that shit because honestly don't buy don't haunted buy shit off the internet dude don't buy haunted shit God damn. idiots um I feel like with uh, marijuana, uh, you have to establish a relationship with it because I feel like if you're an over anxious person, it's going to heighten that anxiety. And until you learn to uh, control, manipulate, or at least like talk your way through it, um, you're going to be stuck in this like high paranoia kind of place but i feel that's because you're not using it or directing it in a way that it should be used right like you're just being like ooh, 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 get high um but then there's also like you can abuse it too just like anything it can be a negative um influence influence on your life again if you're trying to suppress or not move forward in your life like these is when it becomes negative and you become um low energy low ambition low uh you know like if you've got to use that excuse like oh i was gonna do that but i got high which like once is fine um if it's a pattern you got a problem um what else do i have this I do believe it could be used as a tool. I very much use it as a tool. Uh, just, I don't know why I wrote that. Um, I do believe like, especially if you're, uh, at least for me, when I've been meditating or doing magic with uh, marijuana and using its guidance, it's really opened up stuff that I didn't understand. Like right now I'm reading the Nahamani, something like Dead Sea Scroll stuff. And <laughs> that's how much <laughs> I know about it is Dead Sea Scroll stuff. Um, it's such a foreign concept, me reading this or hearing it read to me that I cannot grasp. We're talking about the fall of Sophia. And to me, 
without even I it's it's putting you at a loss for words <laughs> it, it, this is literally how it is to be in my head when I'm thinking about like what does this mean for me because like in you know we're supposed to like why did she fall like understand this fall of Sophia and you know I sat down one time and I was like all right I'm just gonna focus on fall of Sophia just those words and you know it's a story about a deity leaving her counterpart or uh yeah her counterpart and creating our world but it was flawed in some sort of way and that's kind of like we're in this how we're in this world now and uh i just wondered why did she fall why did she feel like she had to separate her separate herself and create something by herself i also wonder um why um and you know i'm i'm thinking this out with my human brain so i'm like why is it that did she was lacking something i almost have this this grasp of this thought of like you know when you're in unity it's it's one it's bliss there's not really anything going on there's no drama it's perfectly balanced it's perfectly in peace well I don't mean this in a bad way, but I think that's very boring almost, right? Like once we achieved it. So I, is it the cycle of like achieving oneness, but then also falling and then working your way back up to true love, like working your way up to find out like A, why you left the consort in the first place and then re-falling back into love with that consort and finding your way back to it. Is that what, you know, the meaning of life is, is to find our way back to divinity? Because if we fell in the first place and, but that's, that's my working clay model of my thoughts right now on that whole thing. But that's what marijuana, like opened it up a little bit. So I could see these pictures of us, like as humanity climbing these ladders back up to divinity. And it's the the joy of these adventures and these like self-realizations to get to the next rung all the way up to oneness again. And that's my rant. And thank you for coming to my TED talk. Thank you for coming <laughs> to my TED talk. Um, it's going to be different for everyone. And you can use uh, marijuana as microdosing as well. Um, you can also test yourself with like smoking it. And I would even do like the herb or the resin or the edibles and see how you feel with each one and how it affects you. Uh, and that's all I've got on my TED. Oh, we. Thank you very much. Steps for Nicole. <laughs> Um, okay. What do I have here? <clears throat> okay. So have? from this book, um, there was a few things that I found. I mean, I found only really great things about marijuana truly, uh, which I found interesting because I do feel like modern day, it is one of the most accepted ailments. You could say drugs, 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 if you drugs. allow it's why I'm saying it like that. Drugs. What we do in the shadows. Anyways. Um, drugs. Do it. This... Do the thing from the shadows. The drugs. Oh, he was on uh... the drugs and now I'm a wizard. Yeah, he says, we drank some blood of the people and the people were on drugs. And now I am a wizard. <laughs> now I'm a wizard. <laughs> My favorite part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> he corrects me up. That's my um, favorite part. Okay. So yeah, in this book, uh, I only have a little bit, but this whole article was really, really good. And um, the... He was talking about how back in the day, cannabis was for the chiefs of the tribe or the alchemists. And when you're gardening and growing your own cannabis plant, weed plant, marijuana plant, whatever you'd like to use, you're engaging in a form of alchemy. Mm -hmm. So for alchemists, cannabis was known as the end of a cycle. And it represented the time after hard work when it was time to slow down, contemplate and recuperate. And that would when we would be indulging in the intaking of the drugs <laughs> of, the, of the drugs so yeah that part comes from that book green gold the tree of life marijuana and magic and religion by chris bennett um 
I have trigger warning Ooh, for I like some trigger strong warnings. belief having heathens. Crowley. Oh God, not Crowley. Not Crowley. He's the worst. Like, Ew. admittedly, the man was a little cray cray. Okay. No. Okay. This is my two cents on Crowley. Let's hear it. Um, I believe. I believe he was doing it for the benefit of magic. I believe that everything that he did, he pushed the boundaries and through the thresholds to find out yes. what was there. And without him, we would not advance in magic without him. So, that's, that's what I was going to say. You cannot deny the man was very clearly effective in what he did. Absolutely. Without mm-hmm. him, we wouldn't have a lot of the knowledge that we have. Mm-hmm. Was his ways a little... They had to be, though. They had to be. Yeah. How are you going to make new magic without breaking some barriers, and right? Like, how is that not going to make you a little cray cray, man? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, you're pushing yourself over the edge every once in a while. You're going to be a little eccentric. <laughs> when you know the secrets of the universe, none of this other bullshit matters. <laughs> you're going to be the crazy village person, okay? Right. Right. <laughs> absolutely there was one time i got a quick story yes so there was there was one story one time a couple of years ago i was sitting on the couch and i was folding laundry by myself it was a sunny day summer blah 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 and i'm watching crowley like whatever i could find on amazon i was watching something crowley like a documentation of some sort i'm sitting there folding laundry and i forget what i was thinking but all of a sudden uh you know, they're talking about him being the most dangerous man and how like, you know, his what his works are, you know, blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, big storm cloud comes over, goes dark, goes dark, big crack of thunder. And then it all dissipates. And I was like, you shit. Like, first of all, I feel crazy saying this, but like on second of all, I was like, you shit, you're going to sit there and show yourself like, I'm like, touche, brother, touche. Like, the trickster. <laughs> right, right. I was like, I hear you. I hear you. But right. he's been, he's been with me ever since. Like, I have a lot of respect for Crowley. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> let, let's be honest. Like, I always look for the good. <laughs> same same i try to look for the good i try to look at why it happened it happened why do i need to dwell in the bad i don't i need to dwell on what did he bring Mm -hmm. so it's really cool Mm because he actually wrote an essay called the psychology of hashish meaning mary jen where he he studied the magical and metaphysical properties of canna cannabis that's cool so cool he said perhaps hashish is the i can't say that so i'm just gonna say mary jane or marijuana because hashish hits my speech impediment okay so he said perhaps marijuana is the drug which loosens the girders of the soul but is in itself neither good nor bad Perhaps it merely exaggerates or distorts the natural man in his mood of the moment. And I fucking love this because this brings me into other things that I found. And when I found that, I was like, oh, my God, it's all tying together. Thank you, Ether. So just like everything we've been talking about this season, there's the, the good and the bad side. There's the flip side to every coin, right? So it can be used like my Arana can be used as a helpful tool in medicine or it can be destructive. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's dependent on how you use it. It's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool. It's a tool. And like, now I get to say, and like Crowley said, it's neither good nor bad. <laughs> so if you tried cannabis, you're probably aware that there are different strains and that they all have a different effects on your moods and your consciousness and your level of awareness. Right. Um, but this is why I was excited to talk to you about, because I had, I was, I'm ready for your feedback because I thought this was very interesting. So I found this article where this person was talking about how um, when you intake marijuana, you can become a vibrational match to its energy with its consciousness and when the entity of marijuana, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the part where I was like, interesting. There it said she she had said there are some things to talk about though. If you are of a lower vibrational than marijuana. It can have an uplifting, elevating effect, Mm -hmm. which is why most people like it. And then she had said the other thing with that, though, is it doesn't teach you how to shift up, (laughs) shift up into that higher vibration without the use of the plant. Mm -hmm. 
So she said, if you're intentionally using it to lift your vibration, then you can catch up to maintaining a level that is of marijuana. And remember, energy flows where attention goes. So if you do a meditation before you use it and set your attentions, you can get what you want out of the experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then she goes into... <laughs> If you are of a higher vibration than marijuana, it could have an effect of lowering your vibration. Mm -hmm. But again, there's no right or wrong answer. This is an experience for you and everyone's will be very different. And I found this conversation of the vibrational energy of marijuana very interesting because to me, I, I, I don't know how else to say this without saying it, but I don't think that it has a set vibration. I almost would agree with you with that. But I mean, at this stage, at this game, like maybe she knows something we don't. Right. right? Um, but yeah, I, I really agree. I plus like what they were giving me is almost like who makes the plan. That's what I was just going to say. I think it's like one of those things where it's alchemy, right? Mm -hmm. This is why I was like, this, this is so cool to think about. Because if we think about what we were just talking about, right? It's alchemy. You mm. are doing alchemy when you're, you're growing it because it has to be grown in specific things and you're putting all this energy into it and you're planting it and you're watering it, you're growing it up, you're cutting it, even the cutting of the flower and the drying of the flower is alchemy. And then you get to the end of the cycle and you use it mm. or they're selling it. So I think dependent on the way that it's grown or who's growing it or what the environment is, all of that can have an effect on the plant's vibration. Absolutely. Well, even furthermore, who cuts it, who mashes it up, who puts it in the, you know, like you could follow that train of thought, like all the way through its process. Right. Yeah. So just like alcohol, you're going to want to ground and bless, talk to the spirit of the, of the drug, of the marijuana, of the plant, of the oil, of uh, you know tincture whatever you got because again it's just like you can either be receptive to what it already has in it or you can cleanse and clear that and set your own attentions into it before you smoke it yeah or ingest it whatever however you like to right um, the only last thing I had on the Mama Jane and the devil's lettuce is that from, is my experience, um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of yeah. validation. Um, when I used to take parts in the Mama Janes, it at first would bring me like an intense sense, like an intense sense of, um, ha, ha. I do that. <laughs> um, an intense sense of calm and peace and it would quiet my mind. So that I could really be in my body and have this like, just really sense, like, like I said, like I said, intense sense of calm. Um, and it, it would allow me to become more aware of my surroundings as well as my body and the like energy around me. Um, other times it would uplift me and bring me thought forms and more creativity, visions, things like that. Right. Um, I have since not partaken in marijuana in a long time, other than every once in a while when we have ceremony here and there, I will, because mm -hmm. the vibrations around feel amazing being on it, even if it's just the tiniest mm -hmm. little baby hit, which is what I normally partake in. Uh -huh. um, it still feels so uplifting and calming, and there's this comfort being around these people. Um I will say for me, it has created panic attacks, but I think what it does is it really shows me where I need to be working on myself. Cause mm -hmm. again, it's bringing me into my body and like really being in the now in my body. And I don't, I've become more aware of that by listening to the power of now with Eckhart Tolle of mm -hmm. this practice of being in my body, which has been amazing. Cause it allows me to uh, work through things quicker and be more aware of them when they're hitting right away. But I think that marijuana would do that. And the minute it would, I'd get panicky. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, God, we're going to feel our feelings. We're going to be high. We got to stop this. We got to stop this. How do we stop this? We be I'm high. I'm, I'm high. high. I'm high. I'm high. <laughs> and then it'd be like, you're just high. But it's like, I am just high. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm high. 
So then like when I would come out of the panic high, I would start understanding why I was feeling the panic high. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't necessarily searched out marijuana as of late because of those panic highs, but I've also been doing more inner body work, which has been cool, but I do have a really deep respect for the plant. And I think that it can really bring about these really awesome moments of peace and calm of feeling your body, feeling your surroundings and like being, being calm and peaceful right. and right. feeling comfy. And you know, everybody's different and um, your energetic body is different than my energetic body. I have, you know, I feel like I have a lot of earth and I have a hard time lifting up where you are a lot of air and a lot of air. Right. So you're already up there really. And, and this is why Nicole and I work so well together. Usually. That's right. <laughs> usually. Usually. Yeah. Too. I'd say 99% of the time there's those 99. Of the times when we got to give each other space. <laughs> <laughs> like I, Oh, 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 <laughs> Oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. I'll oh. see you later, buddy. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Like you ground me and I help bring you up sometimes and it's mm -hmm. like a good balance for us, you know, Absolutely. and then we got the baby with a little bit of spice in there. Oh, and it's like, the spicy. Oh, I forget what the spice feels like. Because we nice. like spicy stuff. I do like spicy stuff. <laughs> I do. All right. Do you have any, let me think if I have anything else to add on marijuana. Um. Um, I guess if I was to give you any sort of guidance with partaking with spirituality and marijuana is to, you know, do your research and um, set your intentions and uh, ask a lot of questions. You know, a lot of these guys that are in the um, dispensary, if you go to a good dispensary, Yes. They they've done the research. They have they're living, eating, breathing marijuana all the time. And the benefits yes. of it, not just like the drug uh recreational use of it. So have a conversation with them. Tell them what you're kind of doing. Look on YouTube, look on, you know, that kind of thing. And write down in journal, like if I took one hit, what did I feel? What did it come to me? Did when it, you know, so you have your own exper experimental science project on how you are having this. It's like dating, you know, like date it for a while. Don't just hop in bed with it. Like actually like, you know, get to know it. Also CBD, ask your dispensary people about Absolutely. CBD. Cause sometimes mm -hmm. the, like the high of it might freak you out a little bit so if you yeah. want to start getting in touch with the cabin can cam cannabinoids Cup Derek like we need your help um <laughs> like the CBD can be also something that can start getting you in touch with the whatever vibration you want to get into you know what I mean and again mm -hmm. talk to your you, that's a great great advice Nicole again snaps for Nicole because like talking to the like, dispensary people I love talking to people that work in dispensaries they know so mm -hmm. much and I'm like they're so nice they're like a you're like a rabbit hole, wormhole yeah, yeah. on information. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, and you know, the one that we're, so my friend Derek works at uh, Ann Arbor Wellness and they do have a website and they do write a lot of like um, blogs about even like the, there's a heavy or a high, high, high dose of marijuana. And forgive me, because this is going to be the basic elementary version of what i'm trying to say but uh a high dose that helps cure cancer now i know nothing about this you'll have to do your own research but like there is a whole article that he has went through and put it on his blog so that's out there so this is the whole thing is that like you really can we have no idea because we have limited it to a drug and not only that a unpurposeful drug and recreational drug that now we've demonized it where even like when I was looking on TikTok, they were talking about how it's like opening up gateways for demons. And I'm like, bitch, those were already there. Like that yes. didn't like, you know, you already had those there's you didn't work on it. You didn't work through it. 
And instead mm-hmm. you're going to blame something else, which, okay, if that's your gig, to me, it would be more, for me, it would be more of like, I'm blaming something else so I can demonize this thing. Yes. Or I'm just going along with, with society's telling me as well. Think for yourself, man. Just think for yourself. If that's your gig too, good. You know, stand More in your power. power. You, man. Yeah, stand in your power because that's Again. what that's about, right? Um, It's just, if you're ending your sentence with like, just don't do it. Who, like, stop telling people what to do. Right. Um, right stop nobody you know, stop um that's it that's all i got for marijuana the marijuana the drugs 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 hmm. so now we go to machines the sissabits the, the sissabins the the psilocybins <laughs> Can we talk about how psilocybin is the best word ever? It's also really fun to say. Right. Like, I love psilocybin. Psilocybin. All the psilocybin. 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 I don't know. Um, I think I just learned how to say it today. So. The psilocybin. The sisybus. I mean, really, we only say psilocybin so I don't sound like a druggie when I'm saying, oh, I'm doing mushrooms. Magic mushies. (laughs) <laughs> right, I gotta say, oh no, it's still psychic because it sounds so much. Mm. It sounds like we actually know what we're talking about. Right, right, psilocybin. Let me put my teacher cap on, dude. So psilocybin, I find so rewarding on like a the 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 people that are talking about the information about psilocybin. I find them to be the most grounded and and wonderful people. Uh, I find that uh, just researching it makes me so happy. And how wonderful, not even just like magic mushrooms, but also like mushroom mushrooms. It's so fascinating, all of it. How like, there's one point where mushrooms will help a plant and deliver nutrients to it and they have a communication and they talk about it and they you know i don't know they help each other out which is so cool and the Mm -hmm. mushrooms aren't really a plant they're actually closer to human beings than being a plant and fun fact um they're the largest living creature on the planet like in a mount like they have the most amount of them like one particular brand of mushrooms which i forget i think it was called honey something in america somewhere because i'm really good at details uh because i want you to research your fucking self right like look it up yeah but, but you're telling us this so tell us no uh it was in this uh in America, there is a certain species of mushrooms that is bigger than um, the whale, the blue whale, because blue whale is the biggest like creature on the planet, but it's really this like honey mushroom. I will be researching this. It's so amazing. I'm very curious. You piqued my interest. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. mushrooms can also make ants zombies. The fungi. The fungi. The fungi. A fun guy. Fungi. It's fungi. <laughs> um, it's very good for your health. It's good. I believe it's very good for rewiring brains. And I know there's a lot of science behind that. Um, It's helped people out with PTSD where they're not so triggered all the time and they can live normal lives without like hiding under tables. Mm -hmm. Um, What is. um, 
this is really like I just you've introduced mushrooms to me this last year and it was one of the most beneficial things that um that has been brought into my life it really has the science that I did on it my own little science experiment is that I tried a very very tiny amount of it and then I was like okay that's I didn't die from that uh and I could feel it a little bit and then one day I had the house to myself so I took you know literally like two (laughs) and at this point I wasn't actually like measuring them because I wasn't I was trying not to be that serious about it I don't know I just had them and no measuring equipment but I was measuring them by like oh two so I had two and I noticed the first thing that I noticed when it kicked in was just a little bit of like this wave Mm -hmm. you know it was almost like this breathing uh energy that I was seeing but you know the thing was is I knew it wasn't like oh my god it's bad it was just like oh that's the effect it almost creates a wave effect over what you're seeing um so then because I was like oh you're supposed to have the walls bleed on this I know so I, I apparently didn't take any so I took another one and then by the time at some point I took a bunch of them but not enough to actually like we're talking like when I say a bunch I mean like you know, five yeah, you know, like <laughs> I learned later that you literally have to take three to five grams to really like trip trip mm-hmm. on it. So I have not made it to that level yet. Um, but what I really liked about it is I felt in control. I just felt better. So I was watching a movie, and like when I'm high on marijuana. It's like, I don't necessarily want to share that with anybody. I really like to do that by myself or at the end of the day. And once I do that, I'm not talking to you. Well, I would talk to you, but I don't talk to anybody, right? Like, I don't want to. Yes, just... <laughs> the exception to the rule. It is me. <laughs> it is you. It is you. I just don't want to share my high with a lot of people like I don't want to do it in a club I'm not you know that's not where I want to be no um now with mushrooms though it helps me be a little more um not so weighed down by everybody's energy I have noticed lately that I keep a very it's a lot of energy to keep everybody at bay and out of my system and with mushrooms, I really feel like I can do that organically. Like it, mm-hmm. I don't want to say it strengthens my aura. I just want to say it, it, um, it makes me not so affected by it. It makes me, instead of being a victim to it, it makes me more powerful than it. Mm-hmm. Um, also what I noticed days after I had, that first acquaintance with psilocybin is that how much lighter I felt. Now that doesn't mean I felt heavy before the, before doing them or taking them, but it was enough to notice the difference once I went through that and even not having it in my system anymore, feeling how light I felt just in the world. It was a super cool feeling without a lot of like, I didn't have to go through this whole, like, you know, they talk about, uh, what's it? Not peyote, but the other one that they do down in Mexico. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like throwing up and like crying because like, I, you know, am Mm -hmm. dealing with like these huge emotional um, breaks. Mm -hmm. or a movement uh it really was this like soft and gentle uh experience yeah so um and since then have used that i feel like you and maybe some people are different like i i feel also i could not 
I don't feel like I can get a not get it. I don't know. I'm just going to say it because I don't know how, how to censor myself, but like, I don't feel like I can get addicted to it because when you take it like two days in a row, it doesn't have the same effect. So I'm not getting that. Like I'm not getting what I got the first time. It's almost like dulled or sent. So I need like a week in between or two weeks in between. And then I have another experience. Um, so it's, it's, a tool that I can use organically when I feel that I a need and it comes a very naturally instead of me like forcing myself like, Oh, I drank yesterday. So I'm not going to drink today. Right. Like, it's not like that. Like I'm making myself the rules. It's almost like it is a relationship that we're not an everyday relationship. Mm -hmm. We're like a friend that sees each other once a week or, you know, maybe, every two weeks maybe once a month and it's helped me not only organize my life it's helped me clean my house it's helped me be better with people especially strangers like going out in public with big crowds it's it's helped me with that uh yeah I only had I would say the one downfall is like when you eat them eat them um, it messes with my tummy a little bit, but I, when I was reading, it said something about take either take a banana while you're eating it and it helps settle your stomach or whatever. So there's ways around that too, but that was the only thing that I really felt. So I have some science stuff for you too, because I've, as Nicole just said, uh, I introduced her to psilocybin because I got introduced to it because I had a new person come into my life and they have been an amazing person. And this person knows who they are, hopefully. Um, they I, I've said thank you to them so many times. They, one, they're an amazing person. And two, mm -hmm. they have brought this thing into my life that has changed my life as well. Um, and uh, what I did when they did, I started doing my own research and there's a lot of things I do know about it already inherently just off of research, but um, mushies actually are a form of food poisoning. Mm -hmm. That's why your tummy gets upset. Um, that Well, that's why that is, but uh, somebody said there's something in it too that it, you just can't digest either. And I don't know yeah. if that's the same thing. They probably didn't want to say food poisoning because that would probably exactly be, be bad. Right. Um, so I don't know yeah. why I'm so fucking bright. Sorry. You have been glowing, baby. <laughs> um, so yes, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms um is psilocybin. And there's some facts that I wanted to bring out because I feel like there's a lot of fear behind psilocybin and behind magic mushy is that you're going to have these really bad experiences because when we were all in high school, we were told that the walls were bleeding and melting onto my face and I was freaking out and the trash can turned into a monster or whatever the hell we've heard, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that's totally what I thought mushrooms were. <laughs> yes. Until we had the experience together, we watched a movie and we, yep. it was just, it was I I that I will never forget that because that was a really good experience with you where we were just both like we feel so good we just feel so good <laughs> so something that always makes me feel really good about it is we've all heard of LSD or ecstasy or Molly correct and all these crazy really high synthetic drugs mm -hmm. psilocybins are natural and they are a hundred times less potent than LSD. I don't know how many times less potent than ecstasy or molly, but a lot less potent and a lot less of the negative effect when you come down or you are no longer high. Okay. The most I think that I have really heard is the tummy aches or like diarrhea. Mm -hmm. You're, it's, you know, you don't really want to eat because your tummy's upset. That's pretty normal. But psilocybin is capable of altering, alt, alter, alter, uh -huh. altering. There it is. Perception of time and space, as well as creating visual distortions, euphoria, and mystical experience. Now, this happens a lot of the time because it's working. It works by binding itself to your serotonin receptors in your brain and helping heal those. Wow. So cool. So that's if you, so cool. Yeah. So if you guys like hear me say that and go back however many minutes to listen out of all Nicole's experiences on this and wow, why it was so positive is because it's healing your serotonin receptors in your brain. So freaking cool. And that's why they're using it in behavioral 
things and therapies and using it to treat a range of psychiatric problems and behavioral disorders, such as depression, OCD. It's helped people quit smoking. It's helped with alcohol addiction, so many other addictions, so many other things that are going on. It's helping with that Mm -hmm. PTSD, things like that. So in our own personal use, of course, always intentions, 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 man. And this goes even more into just then, uh, just in putting a thought behind it. I think there's action that needs to happen. I think this goes along very well with what Nicole said of like, she doesn't like to share her high with anybody. And this is where you get a positive experience. So psychedelics, there's this thing that come along with them of intense or sometimes frightening experiences, right? But that could be minimized by proper self-care, a proper setup and a really comfortable space. You know, I will share this one experience that I had and it was, I cried for four hours, but I released. So I took it for that purpose though, right? Like we were going through a thing. I realized it was, it was about my um, biological father and abandonment issues that we have like generational curse stuff that we have running through our family. And um, it was showing up again and again in my outside world so I finally realized that I needed to kind of like you know visit this and you know mushrooms held my hands through it and it really like I I cried for four hours and like a lot of people would think that that was bad but you know my slogan is feel your feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing wrong with your feelings and feelings are all of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's all, whether it's crying, whether it's joy, whether it's, you know, it's not harboring on one. It's like this, that moment, I needed it so much to release this like attachment that it had where it was governing my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that really helped me through that moment to release that into, you know, just to say goodbye to it and let it go. Such a cool experience. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that we got to keep in mind that sometimes these experiences are necessary because Mm -hmm. they are part of our healing and our transformation. Now, mushrooms aren't going to let you sit in the same spot you've always been. No. No. (laughs) They're not going to let you sit there. You decide to partake in this energy. You are no longer in a stagnant energy. You are being uplifted and propelled forward in my personal opinion and my own experience. Absolutely. You can't stay there. I would have to say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though these experiences can be intense, this is why it's important to do that self-care and that Mm -hmm. setup beforehand so i actually uh i i'm on psilocybin tiktok and um i watched this girl the other day she has made her whole entire house she's got just in a little house and she's made it very comfortable for these experiences she sets up a spot for painting if she feels like painting her emotions out she has a spot where she has her yoga mat because she said a lot of her her yoga mat is her anchor and it allows a lot of emotions out and she has drinks set out snacks set out she has all this stuff ready to go so that if she wants to change the position she's in or the spot she's in she can if she all of a sudden feels like she wants to paint and she is in an experience with mushrooms she doesn't have to go looking for it it's right there ready for her yeah that's such a great idea isn't that awesome Mm -hmm. it's like setting well that takes it from too it takes it from being uh wrong or bad or or like you know, like, oh, I'm gonna like, you know, how society tells you it's so taboo or the, you know, the devil's lettuce or the, you know, it's bad Mm -hmm. and takes it into a very healthy space where you can like, you set yourself up for it. Just like if you were having a picnic, like it's no different, right? No, it's no different. Mm -hmm. Well, and the cool thing is, is there's been, you guys can go on and like do your research and hear about some of people's testimonies and things like that. Now, microdosing is different for every person in milligrams, right? But microdosing isn't necessarily going to get you high considering on 
of course, again, like Nicole likes to call it science, every person's dosing is going to be different. Now, mm-hmm. microdosing for me takes the weight of the world off of me. Yeah. And some of the things that I wrote down in other people's experiences is like when you actually do trip, you can have intense motions. Um, if I get somewhere in the middle where I'm not necessarily microdosing, but I'm not fully going for the full trip, I can have some visual, vivid visualizations or like one time, the first time I ever did it, I'll never forget. I was sitting on my couch in my old apartment and I had those little, like, you know, the led candles and the mm-hmm. candles were waving. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's so cool. I couldn't stop staring at it. I was like, this is so cool. Um, you can see candles, like get this trail. It's yeah. So amazing. And then it made me think that what if there is a veil on reality that we can't see and mushrooms removes that and we're seeing the nature of reality things moving, things having energy, you know, it's a cool thing to think. Um, But these experiences, I want to push this, that they can lead to a deeper understanding of yourself, increased empathy, compassion, self-awareness, as well as greater purpose and meaning to life. It'll help you with a sense of that. Yeah, I I can't, I really, you know, and I'm not... I really think every person can benefit with mushrooms. Like I really do. I think it can. Oh, yes. I think it really can help if you can find. Now there are people because it's de- decriminalized here in Ann Arbor. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can find uh people on the internet to, there are people that I found on the internet that will bring it to me in chocolate form. So you don't have to necessarily like um, ingest the whole mushrooms. They also, you know, make, you put them in a capsule. If you grind it up and put it in a capsule, you can, you know, ingest it that way. We've Mm -hmm. also had it in a tea. I was just going to say, we've had it in tea and that was extremely enjoyable. It was very, and it was a lot less harder on my stomach. Also same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taking them just raw chewing up a dirt tasting mushroom because they don't taste like anything other than like dirty mushroom um is not exactly my favorite way i would say the tea that we've had i do like doing it because there's some sort of raw like animalistic like tribal sense of like eating a mushroom like that you know i feel very shamanic and i feel very like uh medicine woman if you will yes um but you know it's not for i'm one that will just endure the horrible flavor of it <laughs> i will too those really really truly that's how i did it for a very long time and then as, let's be honest i really still do do it that way because just chewing that shit up and getting it down is really a lot faster for me than trying to do something else with it because i'm like i i want i want it now yeah I was going to see if I could find what that mushroom was called, but like I found it, but I can't find its name. Wait, maybe it was it. Honey mushroom. It's known as the honey mushroom. That's all. It's Amalera Osterara mushroom. <laughs> yep. Whatever that was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is what it looks like. Oh, why are mushrooms so cute? Aren't they so cute? They and really that's are. see, that's the word I mangled. If it's Armilia, backwards, Amelia. Amelia. Do you want to put Arm- it back up there? There it is. Armelia. Aria, I think. Aria. Armilia. Armilla. Wait, Armilla. Aria. Armilla. Whatever. I have no idea. Armelia, a star mushroom. It's the mushrooms. It's just it's a, honey mushrooms. It's just a honey mushroom. <laughs> it's just honey mushrooms. Honey That's mushrooms way mushroom. easier than whatever that word is. Seriously. Yeah. Um, I think I will say I have in my experience, mushrooms. The difference that I noticed between mushrooms and weed for me, and why I prefer mushrooms is weed puts me in my body 
makes me feel like I can just relax in my body. I very much feel like mushrooms lift me up and they bring me in here. It's like light and like I keep mm -hmm. getting pulled up. Mm -hmm. For me, I feel like it depends on, so if I eat, if I do an edible, that puts me in my body and I feel very tingly. Um, and when I think about it, you know, a lot of times I, I make sure I do intentions on stuff and I think my body, I think the weed, I think, um, even if I can feel like the light source is running through my energetic, like being, you know, I think about like, thank you for my organs that are, uh, functioning well. Thank you for my legs that are, that are carrying me places. I really think and think about my body and really try to connect with it, with that. When I smoke it, it's more of a high. So it's, um, but I, I will say that like, if I smoke too much of it, I will lose attention and focus. So there is a sweet spot to it. If you want to use it, then if you want to just go crawl in bed or <laughs> and sit down and you know, that kind of stuff, which is okay too, but mm -hmm. it depends on what you really want to do by the amount that you take. Right. Um, and then mushrooms have done everything from like being able to connect with other people and being in the crowd with them and taking my power back with that to, uh, cleaning to understanding philosophies and helping me research and not be so intimidated by the amount of work I need I feel I need to do to be a magician mm -hmm. and like the histories and um you know even with understanding the Kabbalah or trying to understanding the Bible, understanding uh the Quran, understanding uh hermetics, understanding like all these heavy books where people aren't actually, you know, breaking them down, you have to really dive into it and see what's in it for you. It has really helped me not be so afraid and overwhelmed by all of that. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. I like it. So again, we're not telling you guys to do any of this stuff. We're mm -mm. just, we wanted to have an open conversation about things that make people uncomfortable per the usual. Per <laughs> use. We want to make you think. We want to make you do your research. We want to just open up the conversation so you guys can start thinking for yourselves and not listen to mainstream reefer madness yeah. propaganda. Yeah, you gotta, you really got to like, if one person says that, you know, marijuana opened a demon for them, then that was probably in them to begin with, or they subconsciously needed that experience for whatever reason. Each experience is going to be different. And it's not going to necessarily be the same. And only you can go through this and uh, experience your experience. Yeah. And this all starts with questioning everything. Somebody told me that, I would say, why do you say that? What did you experience? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How did that happen? What right. happened? All the all the questions. I would have all the questions because before I just been like, oh, wow, I'll never do that. Right, right. I'm like, wait, what? Why, who, where, when, what, how? Right. So, Yeah. Ask the questions, you guys. Get your brain thinking. I promise it'll help you in life in general. Mm -hmm. Well, and I feel like eventually on our spiritual journey, we will get to a point where we won't need these crutches and we won't need these like side steps. We'll be, I don't know, we'll be above that, you know, like an elder, you know, like I'd feel like a child now that I need help. I need somebody to help me with a step stool. I'm not tall enough. Like, mm -hmm. so, but I'm not using it in a way I, well, I don't have to even defend myself on it. Like it's helped me and that's the positive aspect and my life is going great for it. Yeah. So I think to reiterate 
before we end, I would just like to reiterate what we had said earlier. Um, if you are struggling with any of this because you have trauma behind it, let's look at that. If you feel triggered because of anything we said today, I would invite you to look at that. I invite you to figure out where it's coming from, why it's there, and how you're going to help it, how you're going to heal it just for yourself so you can feel better. If, you know, you are you or somebody you know is addicted, I sound like a fucking commercial, but if you or somebody you know is addicted and, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't forget to, one, give yourself or them compassion right. and understanding and love no shame no shame don't shame them so don't guilt them because and and don't shame or guilt yourself no, no. um stop yeah. punish stop the punishing stop yeah. punishing people for Man. being like nicole scared. said we all fall off that damn bike guy absolutely like oh. God, you know i i've really come to the point of like we are a society that have decided to punish people to be what we have quoted, quote, a good citizen, right? Mm -hmm. And I just have these questions for you to think about is when was the last time somebody was yelling at you that changed your mind? Or somebody was angry at you and it made you change your mind about the certain subject that you were yelling at, right? And no amount of, we're very eager, especially with addicts, we're very eager to say they're bad and well i'm just not gonna do i'm not just gonna help them anymore and if that's your boundary yes like okay i don't know what they've done to you i don't know like i get it but like also remember it's really hard for them and they are in this addicty place because of feelings and trauma and stuff that they they either don't have the necessary tools to work on with it or, you know, are they afraid of facing that monster? And if we look at it as more like a monster than like a habit that they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, we would have more compassion because like, you know, that shark is really scary and it could bite me and I would die. And that's how you kind of got to think about that's what they're, the drug is helping them not face the shark ever, right? It's not giving them the tools to face it or the monster that's in the dark, it's keeping it away. Yeah. And if you're somebody that's helping somebody go through that, don't be scared to stand in your power in it. Like people can yes. tell you whatever they want to, and they can try to deter you from it. But if you want to do that, do that and do it gracefully, do, it, do it, get help with it too. You know, like, yeah. Al-Anon is there for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're dealing with somebody with heroin, try to find a group of people that are experienced into helping people with heroin yes. or with other drugs that are hard, you know, and people are ruining their lives with it. Cause like, that's a real thing and we get it. Even just alcohol, man. Or it, gambling. Gambling was always gambling. the one too, oh, right? Yeah. Like it's not even a drug. It's like, uh, it's a high that you're chasing still, yes. but like same yeah. thing so don't feel guilty don't feel mm -hmm. shameful mm -hmm. don't be scared fear um have Find compassion it. have love for yourself and others huge things that i really wanted yeah. to end that with because mm -hmm. uh, it's a hard thing to deal with because like at the end of the day if you want to cut them out of your life and i get that i get that wholeheartedly at yeah. the end of the day, if you have done all of the things and your boundary is, is that you have to cut them out, you have to cut them out. But I want you to do it in a healthy way and not in an anger way where you're going to feel bad when they've overdosed or when they've gone too far Yeah, and you feel guilty because you weren't there. Yes. And this is where the boundaries come in and they really help your life because you are not responsible for that person. Right. Right. Like, yes, you may be, you're there to help, but you're not responsible for it because they have free will. They have choices to make too. Yeah. You can only do so much. You can't make somebody do something and you can't make choices for them. Mm -mm. 
And it doesn't matter how much you get angry and it doesn't matter how much you shame them. And it doesn't matter that those things don't matter. So we have to start approaching these addictions in way different ways, way different ways. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much you get hurt and you want them to take responsibility for it. People, we, that's not true healing. That's not true healing. Okay. I've Mm -hmm. been talking about this a lot this week because of events that have happened in my life. True healing is forgiveness without them taking responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. And it takes a lot to get, you know, you got to find your way through the forest into that forgiveness. But once yeah. you're there, once you have it, it's so powerful and so freeing, even so freeing. Oh, it's great. So, yeah, we just want to really reiterate that because, yeah, this we, is a this is a hard subject, hard conversation, <laughs> especially when we're talking positive about it. Mm-hmm. Because like, like anything else, I can either use a hammer to build a house to have shelter or I can bash you in the skull with it. Yep. And I, yep. you know, that's one of the things that you really got, like there's a, it is a double-edged sword. It, there is polarity to everything and really think about this and how, and look at it in different ways because what we've been doing doesn't work anymore. Right. And that's all I have to say. Doesn't freaking work anymore, man. Right? It doesn't, yeah. doesn't work. You're done. It's done. You're, You're done. done. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Dean Winchester. Oh, and Bob Ross. And shout out to Bob Ross. Some oh. happy little trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some happy little trees. Uh, I forget what Dane does or whatever. Anyway. Uh, I'm sure it's quite quite a lot. Not consistency very of the colorful. same thing being reiterated like Bob. All right. I was like, <laughs> we are definitely very opposite today. We are very opposite <laughs> today. <laughs> but it's so funny because we never talk about what we're gonna wear or anything or mm-hmm. how we're gonna do our makeup or hair or anything. And mm-hmm. the fact that we're both wearing some of our favorite like people is so funny to me. <laughs> uh-huh. Very much, very much. I'm like, she loves Dean and I love Beb. <laughs> I love Dean Winchester. If this is my guilty pleasure if I ever had one. Supernatural. Oh, girl. Mine would be painting with Bob Ross. I watch it every night before bed. Oh, happy little dreams. It just makes me chill out. <laughs> <laughs> so for Dean. Okay, folks. We're, that's a wrap. We're that's wrapping. a wrap. We're wrapping. Wrapping this shit up. All right, heathens. We will see you in the next episode, friends. Bye, heathens. Have a good week.